Hello there, it's me again, Alan from Exa Foundation. Today I'm going to start with a question. I want you to think about where is the best place to view our world from? Oh, I said think, don't shout it out. Think, where's the best place to view the earth? So I hope you are thinking of the International Space Station. Or some people call it the ISS because that's where we're going to head for our second expedition to the ISS. Now in this video we're going to take in some views from the space station. We're going to learn how not to get lost in space and how to keep ourselves hydrated. Whew, getting thirsty so we need to get hydrated. Now we're looking out into space. Hmm, how do we take in views from space? Oh, look, there is the International Space Station. Let's get a little bit closer. Hmm, where on Earth? Actually, no, not where on Earth. Where on the International Space Station would we choose to look out from? Well, that's what we're today is all about. In this video we're going to take in some views from the International Space Station. I think I'll just say ISS, it's easier to say that. But we're also going to learn how you can not get lost in space or on board and we are going to learn how to keep ourselves hydrated. Now, um, here's the thing. How do... Where are the windows? Did you see any windows on our last visit to the International Space Station? I certainly don't remember seeing some. Hmm. Here's a question. I'm going to ask a question. Nod your head if you know. Have you ever flown on an airplane? Nod your head if you have. Have you ever taken a journey on a bus, a coach or a train? Right. So you've seen... When you're in the vehicle, there are windows around and you can look out and you can spot the landscape. Hmm, I wonder how that would happen on the International Space Station. And even if you were on an airplane, you can look out the windows and you can see the wings and you can see the engines. Hmm, I'm still not sure where on the International Space Station. I'm going to look in a little bit closer. Can I zoom in? Hmm. I'm not seeing any windows on here. So where might the windows be? And another question is, which way would they point? So you could pause the video now while you think they're not windows. No, they're, I think they call them solar grid array. They're solar panels. They look like windows, but they're not. Okay. Now, here's something that I was surprised to know. The International Space Station, <coughs> the ISS, has been in orbit, that's like floating, circumscribing the Earth, for 20 years now. And it's only had windows for the last 10. What do they do for the first 10? Well, the windows, they are clustered together. So you won't find them all over the place. And they're in a structure that's called the cupola which is the Italian word for dome. I think the Italians say cupola like that. You could try pronouncing the word cupola, cupola. Now, astronauts use the cupola to observe the Earth and as well as other things like satellites and space activities. I think it would be a good idea for us to find Steve again. Remember Steve, the astronaut we've mentioned last time and, and we got to hear from Steve. Now, before we do, I have a challenge that I'd like you to try and solve. So this is the second one. I asked you first about where the windows might be. Here's the second one. When Steve takes us on a tour in this video, he's going to mention some direction words like left, right, up. But he's going to mention more than those. And I want you to count how many different direction words can you hear Steve use all together. And then when he's finished, I'm going to ask you how many you counted. So it's time to go and find Steve and ask him to show us. 
Oh, there he is. Right. Hi, Steve. It's us again. Where are we? Right. We're back in Note 3. Okay. Gonna head Nader into the cupola. Got some sunlight now. Okay, we're heading Nader. Ooh. And this is our best viewing spot okay. in the world. Come on in. Okay. Get out of the way. A bit cozy in here. Can you tell us what all this equipment is? Okay, so we have full of cameras up here. And of course, robotic workstation, just like in the lab. Ooh, look at the earth. And there's a beautiful earth. Yeah. So Whoa. we can hang out. You see the arm? I don't know if you can see the arm there. No, where, where is that? It's set up. Uh, it's on the top, or sorry, on the bottom of node two. It's connected to it right, right there. Uh -huh. And that's the position that we use to grapple the cargo vehicles, SpaceX and Cygnus and HTV. And it goes in right on node two just a Ooh. little bit forward of where it's where it's grappled to note two is where we birthed those vehicles what else is there and if you come right here then you can see to the right is the japanese the gem which we'll go to shortly along with the exposed facility out there that's part of the japanese motors too when we have experiments that are outside and we have a japanese arm that can move those around and do uh, work on those and you can see right now if a little bit more to the right you'll see actually a launcher that we've been launching small satellites off of right there yeah. which is kind of cool uh, that's kind of nice to, watch, watch, nice to watch those go by if you go back to the left over here you're going to see the PMM which is our storage vehicle it's right there oh yeah made by the Italian space agency as you can see Hazi as you go farther aft you'll see first is a progress that no, that's you, my space. It is. That is Tonto's <laughs> progress right there. Oh, it's a Soyuz. <laughs> I know that. Whoa, uh, he's look time. down there. He's a cargo. So, you know, <laughs> no, it is a Soyuz. It is a Soyuz because it says so on there. And it is a, uh, it's the one that uh, uh, the 39S crew came up on. And then behind that is a progress. And uh, not just a Russian cargo vehicle. And as you go around, that's pretty much uh, what you can see out here. You got solar arrays, of course, on each side. If you go over this side, all the way over, you can see the solar array on Ooh, the port yeah. side. They're huge, aren't they? Here you kind of view what it is like from outside out here on the station. But this is the best part out here, though, is looking down at Earth. Absolutely. We try to do this as much as possible. Unfortunately, we don't get near as much time as we'd like. They make us do work. Uh, okay. Let's go on back. Okay, so I'm just going to ask Steve to stop there for a minute. So, I did ask you, how many different directions did you count? Did you count more than three? Did you count seven? I counted ten altogether. Here we go. He said, up, right, top, bottom. He said, forward, left and down but there was something did you notice that when he said it was on our left it was on our right and the other way around well that could be because well it's confusing when you're in space there isn't really an up and down um now there were some others that he mentioned that you may not know he said nader Ooh, nader that's one we haven't heard before nader that means down and there's another one he didn't mention this time, zenith, which is to mean to go up. He also, there was also aft and then port where the solar arrays are. So directions can be really confusing when you're moving about on the space station because up, down, left, right, they mean different things in space. So there is no ceiling or floor. There's only walls. And when Steve was talking to us to Cupola, you might have said, you might have heard him say Nader down to earth. But he did say aft, meaning behind you. So it's a good idea for astronauts to use these different words. Forward, aft, port, starboard, zenith, nadir. Now, it can be really confusing. Listen out and see if you hear Steve mention these again. You know, sometimes you see signs on the walls that say, like, which way is aft or starboard. So have a look at them. 
Whew. Now, all of that, that was thirsty work. So here's the third thing I want to ask you today. So did you know that astronauts become easily dehydrated? It's because all that dry air. Do you remember all that noise, all those fans? Well, it's very, very dry. And, whew, you know, talking makes it even worse. So we're going to watch Steve as he hydrates himself but I wonder, you could pause the video right now and figure out what does that mean to hydrate yourself and how would you do that? And in a moment, Steve will show us how he hydrates himself. See, it looks like he's upside down, doesn't it? Or are we upside down? Oh, this is all so confusing. Oh. Look at all them shoes. Are they on the wall or the ceiling? And on the way, I'm gonna get some water because I realized I was thirsty. That's I'll a good idea. I'll put water either for our drink bags or for if you need to rehydrate some food. We have a place we get water. It's either just kind of room temperature water or it's hot water. Grab hold of those rails. This is the location. It's called the PWD, Portable Water Dispensable Dispenser. Potable Water Dispenser. I need that. And it probably is portable too, but not that good. So you just put whatever it is into the adapter. Tell it how much water you want. And hit the button. It's pretty easy. Even okay. I can do it. Show us. Come on. Show us how it works. Now if you do want some cool stuff, we have these... Uh, it's called Merlins, but they're kind of set for refrigerators. But we look at them. And we have stuff in there. Our main uh, sriracha sauce. sauce right there is sriracha. Uh -huh. And we live off of that, at least I do. That right makes it, everything taste better. It's done, it fills up. And the uh, nice thing about these things, these straws, of course, it's got a little clamp on there. So if I didn't have that on there, I'll show you real quickly. If that's just off on there, the water pressure, it just starts coming oh, on out. Look at that. There we go. Let's go into the gym. Oh, now, look, there's some signs there on the wall. Let's just stop right there for a moment. Look at that. On the left-hand side, there's a sign there. And look at that over on the right. STBD. I wonder what STBD. I think you know what it means. So, um, we're going to finish our visit there for today. I know you're going, ooh, but we've got more visits planned. I do have some more questions that I want you to think about before our next visit. And a few things for you to try at home as well. Don't forget, there is a much longer video of Steve on the ISS that you can watch this at any point yourself. And you can see the areas we visited and go to some places that we haven't been yet. So that's number one, I'm making a suggestion. You could go and watch the longer video. It's about 50 minutes, so it's nearly an hour. Now question number two. Oh, let me get something. I'm moving slowly, zero G. Oh, what's this that's just moved across the camera? Oh yes, sriracha sauce. Ah, whew, that kicks. I'd like you to think, why is it that astronauts need spicy sauce? He said, we live off it. Really? Do they really live off it? Now, it might cost as much as £10,000 to send this into space. That's a lot. That's very expensive delivery charges. What would happen if they didn't have any sriracha sauce? Now, question number three. Well, this is a suggestion, really. I don't know if you saw me show this before, but I have in my bedroom, I have some little post-it notes, sticky notes that I've put to remind me which way is Nader, which way is Zenith, Port and Starboard. You could make some labels as well to help you remember the names of the directions. So not only will you not get lost in space, you won't get lost in your bedroom either. Now, 
Question number four. Mm, you might not want to hear this. You might want to pause the video because I might be about to put some really horrible, nasty thought in your head. Because before our next expedition to the ISS, I want you to think, are there any problems? Mm, any problems that you might have about, mm, how can I say about keeping your body clean in space and um, how might you go to the toilet in a zero G environment? Mm, so there we go. Right, I'm going to say goodbye now and leave you with those nice thoughts to think about and I look forward to seeing you on our next adventure. I'm going to wave. Oh, to be careful because I'm doing it in zero G.